I am Shamla Ji, Assistant Professor, Department of Botany, Tradition College. Today I am going to explain about the plant body, Silotum, which belongs to a pteridophyte. And the Silotum belongs to the division Pteropsida, subdivision Silopsida, order Silateles, and the family Silataceae, and the genus Silotum. Silotum is a plant body which belongs to pteridophytes and it is grown worldwide in tropic and subtropic regions. And uh, commonly growing Silotum species are Silotum nodum and Silotum flaccidium. Silotum nodum is a terrestrial form whereas Silotum flaccidium is a epiphytic plant body. Usually in pteridophytes the plant sporophytic plant body is dominant over the gametophytic plant body. Here we'll start with the morphological structure of sporophytic plant body of Silotum. This is the plant body, morphological plant body of a Silotum plant body. The plant body has been differentiated into underground rhizome part and the aerial erect aerial shoot part. Underground rhizome is brown in color and it shows dichotomous branching and it helps in the attachment of the plant body to the substratum whereas on the rhizome it is having uh, small hair like structures called rhizoids and these rhizoids helps in absorption of water molecules and from the rhizomatic part aerial shoot arises aerial shoot is green in color and it is always circular towards the base and it shows ridges and grooves towards the apical part and the whole aerial uh, shoot plant body is showing dichotomous branching at uh, from the base to the apical region and all the aerial part it is green in color and it is showing the photosynthetic character and on the aerial part we are also having scaly leaves there are two types of scaly leaves one is uh, for, uh, sterile leaves which are present all over the plant body and they are uh, green in color but they do, do not perform the photosynthetic uh, function whereas we have fertile scaly leaves which are present towards the apical part of the plant body and it bears trilobed spore bearing structure called synangium which is a reproductive structure. Now we'll move on to the internal structures of a plant body. We'll first move on to the TS of rhizome. TS of rhizome it is circular in outline and it is having uh, differentiated into epidermis cortex and the stellar region. Epidermis is made up of a single layer of cells. It is made up of parenchymatous cells and it is highly cutinized at the upper part of the epidermis. Below the epidermis we have the cortical region. Whole cortical region is made up of parenchymatous cells and here the cortex is made up uh, differentiated into three parts outer cortex, middle cortex and the inner cortex. Outer cortex it is made up of again parenchymatous cells and it is filled with mycorrhizal fungi. It is associated with mycorrhizal fungi which helps in getting the uh, nitrogen fixation. And in the center it is having middle cortex. It is made up of again parenchymatous cells and it is filled with starch, uh, starch grains. And innermost cortical cells it is dark brown in color due to the presence of phlobobin which is the oxidation part of tannins. And in the center it is having a stela region. It is the center central core of a plant body and uh, uh, steel is having the outer endodermis layer, a single endodermis layer followed by single layer of pericycle and in the center it is having a xylem elements. Xylem element, uh, central core of xylem is present which is going to be surrounded by phloem elements and this kind of steel it is called as proto steel. And next coming to the TS of stem, if you take the section at the basal part, it is circular in nature. If you take the section towards the apical part of the stem, it is showing ridges and grooves. And uh, the out, uh, outermost layer of the section, it is called as again epidermis and it has been interrupted by stomatal structures. In between the epidermis, we have stomatas and these stomatas are restricted to the groove region, which is a characteristic feature of a xerophytic plant body and uh, for the epidermis it is having the uh, cuticle region which gives 
thickness to the epidermis. Epidermis is followed by again cortex. Cortex is differentiated into outer cortex, middle cortex and inner cortex. Outer cortex is made up of, made up of loosely arranged chlorenchymata cells which helps in photosynthesis whereas middle cortex it is made up of sclerenchymata cells which is a dead mechanical tissue which gives mechanical support to the stem part and the innermost cortex it is made up of parenchymata cells which helps in storage of starch material and in the center we have the presence of stelar region and the cortical region uh, structure has been restricted by the development of a layer of endodermis endodermis is followed by pericycle in the center we have a steel this uh, the steel here it is having a central core of xylem the xylem element show radiating arms uh, this kind of xylem elements which is having star shaped uh, structure are called as actinosteel uh, uh, meta xylem is towards the center and the radiating arms are showing the proto xylem elements and whole xylem element has been surrounded by phloem elements the steel in the case of xylotum stem it is of actinosteel and next we'll move on to the reproduction the, since the plant body is a diploid uh, in nature it it is going to be reproduced through producing a spore bearing structure called synangium. Synangium is going to be developed on a fertile uh, leaf uh, and the axils of fertile leaves synangium is going to be developed. If we take the section of synangium it is again trilobed structure. It is having a three locular structure or as three sporogenous tissues are present in the center and inside the uh, sporogenous tissue or uh, locules it is filled with spores all the spores are of same kind and same size hence the plant body is called as homosporous plant body or homosporous in condition and it is having an outermost protective layer the synangium called as epidermis and the uh, epidermis is followed by uh, a wall layers till the sporogenous cavity is going to be developed it is filled with wall layers at the time of dehiscence towards the dehiscence region epidermal cells are thin in their nature and they are going to dehisce and from the cavity the spores are going to be released the release spores inside the cavity the spore mother cells will be present at a mature stage after getting maturity the spore mother cells undergoes reductional division that is meiotic division so that it will form spore tetrads each spore tetrads are going to be released out at the time of dehiscence after the dehiscence the spores are having single spore is having an inner intine wall and an outer exine wall outer exine wall is reticulate in nature and this spores will remain in the atmosphere for four uh, weeks after uh, getting suitable environment and the uh, suitable environment the spores are going to be uh, germinate to produce the gametophytic plant body the gametophytic plant body is going to be developed by the division of continuous division of the spores this spore which is produced from the synangium is the first cell of gametophytic phase the first gametophytic phase is, uh, is always haploid in nature whereas the sporophytic plant body is diploid in nature so uh, the spore is going to be uh, germinated in producing the gametophytic thallus the thallus is always it is uh, having it is completely made up of parenchymatous actively growing cells and after some times uh, the gametophytic thallus also shows dichotomous branching after that uh, the gametophytic thallus the parenchymatous cells in a gametophytic thallus are also will be associated with the mycorrhizal fungi later on when it attains maturity the gametophytic thallus will uh, enter into reproductive stage so it produces anthridia as a male reproductive structure and archegonia as a re female reproductive structure archegonia is go uh, and uh, anthridia both are going to be developed from the outer cells of a gametophytic thallus those cells are called as superficial cells from each each superficial cells sexual reproductive structures are going to be developed uh, if you take the anthridial cell it is having an outermost jocket layer which gives protection to the 
anthridial cells. Inside that, we, we, we are having anthridial mother cells. These anthridial mother cells undergo reactional division in producing the anthrozoites. Anthrozoites are going to be released out from the anthridia to the environment. Later on, uh, since the plant body is monoecious in nature, anthridia and archegonia are going to be developed on a same thallus, gametophytic thallus. If you take the archegonia, it is a female reproductive structure which is going to be developed at the apical region of a gametophytic thallus and uh, each archegonia it is having an outer uh, layer of uh, neck canal cells which gives protection to the archegonia and uh, it is having neck canal cells and a venter canal cell and a large egg cell at the base. This uh, when as soon as this is the structure of archegonia as soon as the anthrozoites come in contact with the archegonial neck canal cells neck canal cells venter canal cells all the cells are going to be degenerate and makes the pathway for the entering the anthrozoites these anthrozoites come in contact with the egg cell and it forms the zygote of the cell so this first zygote which is going to be a diploid after the fusion of anthridia anthrozoite and egg cell both are haploid these, these two are going to be fused to form a uh, diploid zygotic cell this diploid zygotic cell is the first cell of uh, gamete uh, sporophytic generation so this explains the life cycle of a xylotum plant body where it enters the sporophytic plant body is going to produce the synangium at the time of reproduction and it is deployed in nature after meiotic division it produces haploid spores this haploid spore is a uh, first cell of gametophytic thallus so it develops gametophytic uh, generation from again from the gametophytic generation we are getting the diploid zygotic cell which develops into a sporophytic cell so it this explains the life cycle of a xylotum which uh, explains the alternation of generation from sporophytic generation to gametophytic generation thank you and please subscribe for the